Levine et al. 2001 Cross-Cultural Altruism Background Anecdotal observation and previous research has suggested that people are more likely to receive help from strangers in certain cities, compared with others. However, prior to Levine's study into cross-cultural differences, many of the previous studies had only investigated differences within a single country, and so usually only focused on the population size of communities as the main independent variable, ignoring other factors that may have an influence on helping behaviour. The researchers in Levine's study wanted to investigate whether other factors, such as cultural values, economic factors, and the pace of life, had an impact on helping behaviours in relation to non-emergency situations. Aim. Levine's study had three aims to investigate cultural differences in helping behaviour. One, to find out whether people's tendency to offer non-emergency help to strangers is the same across situations over a wide range of cultures. Two, to find out whether there is a substantial variation in the cultures that were studied in relation to helping behaviour. Three, to identify any country-level variables that might affect helping behaviour. Sample. Levine's study used a random sample from 23 different countries around the world. The countries that were chosen were carefully selected to be as culturally diverse as possible, and it was usually the largest city in each country, or another major city. Methodology. The study was a field experiment using an independent measures design, of which there were three main conditions. One, a victim who dropped a pen. Two, a victim who had an injured leg who dropped a pile of magazines and three, a victim who was blind trying to cross a street at a pedestrian crossing. The dependent variable was the rate at which people helped the victim in each city, which was calculated to give the cities an overall helping index. The results from the three independent variables were then correlated with statistics related to each city, including population size, economic indicators, cultural values, and walking speed, which was an indicator of pace of life. For cultural values, each country was rated on a scale which measures whether they are more individualistic orientated or collectivist orientated. Data was collected either by students who were travelling in the countries where the trial was taking place, or by psychologists in other countries who volunteered to assist the researchers. All experimenters were male and of college age, and dressed neatly and casually. To ensure standardisation in scoring and avoid experimenter bias, all experimenters were given thorough training on how to act as the role of their victim and how to score participants based on their behaviour. No verbal communication was required of the experimenter to further standardise the procedure. Other areas of the study were also highly standardised, including the trials taking place in the city centres during main business hours and during the summer months. Each of the three helping measures was administrated in two or more locations, in a main city centre district, during main business hours on clear days, during the summer months of one or more years between 1992 and 1997. For the first two measures which required approaching pedestrians, only individuals walking alone were selected. Children younger than 17 years old and people who might not be capable of helping, or to be expected to help, e.g. those who are physically disabled, very old, or carrying heavy packages, etc., were excluded. Participants were selected randomly, usually by approaching the second participant who crossed the pedestrian line. Procedure. The three conditions involved similar processes where the victim would carry out a routine in front of a passerby. In the dropped pen condition, experimenters walked towards a random pedestrian passing in the opposite direction. When they were 10 to 15 feet away, the experimenter reached into a pocket and accidentally dropped a pen in full view of the pedestrian and continued walking past. A total of 214 men and 210 women were approached, and participants were scored as having helped if they called back to the experimenter that he had dropped the pen, or if they picked up the pen and brought it back to him. In the hurt leg condition, the experimenter walked with a heavy limp and wore a large, clearly visible leg brace. This time, they accidentally dropped and unsuccessfully struggled to reach down for a pile of magazines as they came within 20 feet of a passing pedestrian. A total of 253 men and 240 women were approached, and participants were scored as having helped if they offered to help pick up the magazines or helped without offering. In the blind condition, the experimenters dressed in dark sunglasses and carried white canes, acting in the role of a blind person who needed to cross the street. They stepped up to the corner before the lights turned green, held out their cane and waited until someone offered to help. The trial was terminated either after 60 seconds or when the light turned red, whichever occurred first, after which the experimenter walked away from the corner. A total of 281 trials were conducted. 
The participants were scored as having helped if, at a minimum, they had informed the experimenter that the light was green. Results. The main findings from the study was that the only cultural variable that was significantly correlated with helping behaviour was the economic productivity of the countries. It was found that countries where residents had a higher purchasing power per capita tended to be less helpful overall, compared to countries with a lower purchasing power per capita. The overall helping index showed that the top three most helpful cities were Rio de Janeiro in Brazil, San Jose in Costa Rica, and Lilongwe in Malawi, while the three least helpful cities included Kuala Lumpur in Malaysia, New York in the US, and Singapore. The results also showed that there were no significant gender differences in relation to helping behaviour, nor any relationship between the size of a city's population and helping. A small relationship was found between helping behaviours and pace of life, which was measured by walking speed, with residents of faster walking cities tending to be slightly less likely to help, however this was statistically insignificant. Similarly, residents of cities that were more individualistic were also slightly less likely to exhibit helping behaviours, but again, the correlation between the two variables was not significant. In relation to the three conditions, dropped pen, hurt leg, and a blind victim, overall, it was found that the helping rate was relatively stable across each measure. Conclusions The researchers concluded that countries that have less well-developed economies can sometimes be accompanied by a traditional value system, or way of life, which encourages people to assist and be friendly towards strangers. The results show that cities located in Latin America and Spain were all above the mean in overall helping, which the researchers suggested may perhaps be due to cultural ethos, called simpatia in Spanish or simpatico in Portuguese. There is no direct translation of this in English, but it roughly refers to a range of amiable social qualities, such as being friendly, nice, agreeable, and good-natured, and being well to help others. The researchers were careful to point out, however, that this was merely a suggestion since it was based on a correlation only. They also mentioned that Latin America is overwhelmingly of the Roman Catholic faith, which could perhaps be an alternative explanation, if people use their faith as a basis for being a good Samaritan. Overall, the researchers concluded that further research would be needed to disentangle the national and religious variables that could be at play in the rates of helping behaviour in different communities around the world. Evaluations The study was a field experiment that took place in a natural setting, which meant that the experiment was high in ecological validity since the participants didn't know they were being observed and were therefore not influenced by demand characteristics. The experiment was also highly standardised, or the experimenters were all male and were given thorough training on how to act as the role of their victim and how to score participants. The trial only took place in the city centres during the main business hours and during the summer months to control for any extraneous variables related to a city being more or less busy at certain times or seasons. Therefore, the study was relatively high in reliability. The researchers commented about how all the three main community variables, economic productivity, walking speed and individualism, were highly intercorrelated, which means they may not have been the most useful set of predictors for explaining helping behaviour in the study. Another main strength of the study was the fact that it used a very large random sample across multiple cities around the world. The sample was extremely diverse and cities were specifically chosen to ensure the study was as culturally diverse as possible, meaning that the results were highly generalisable. The fact that the cities from a lot of different countries were used also means that the study was not ethnocentric, which was important since it was measuring whether there were any cultural differences between helping behaviours. The study collected a large amount of quantitative data, which enables researchers to easily compare the results that were gathered and draw conclusions from them. It also made the research more reliable, since it would be easier for future researchers to replicate the procedure using highly controlled conditions. However, the study did not collect any qualitative data, and therefore there was no in-depth descriptive data gathered that could have enabled participants to explain why they helped or didn't help the victim. The researchers suggested multiple reasons why helping behaviour was more prevalent in Latin America, however there were no verbal insights gathered from participants to confirm or contradict them. In terms of ethics, the participants were not aware that they were being studied, did not give consent to take part, and were not debriefed after the study ended. However, they were also not subject to any significant psychological or physical harm, and the experimenters were trained not to involve any children or vulnerable adults in the study. Arguably, it was necessary to deceive participants in the study in order to enhance its ecological and internal validity, since it meant that there were less demand characteristics, or social desirability bias. It also made the study's results more useful since participants didn't know they were being studied and were acting in their normal environment.